This video is sponsored by Mel Science. Now this looks like plastic. It's hard and shiny. It feels like something you'd find in a toy, but it's not. Just minutes ago, this started its life as simple, brittle yellow powder. What you're seeing here is a secret transformation, a hidden power locked inside one of the most ancient elements known to humanity. It's a change that underpins everything from tires on your car to the medicines that keeps us healthy. And we're going to show you how it exactly works. Welcome to Cube Chemistry, where we will discuss all the elements of the periodic system and also do experiments. So if you like this video and want to see more, make sure to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will never have to miss another episode. Also, make sure to fill in the poll in the post section of the channel for next week, as we will be discussing another element. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we've discussed how sulfur turns into rubber, and I showed a specific graph. Well, that thing can go out of the window, as we will be showing today how it actually works. So, what is the plan for today? Well, it's simple. We're going to take pure sulfur, heat it up. That's it. We just want to see what happens when you melt an element. But, as we will find out, just melting sulfur is a bit like saying you're just going for a walk near an erupting volcano. The results are way more dramatic and way more important than you'd ever guess. Now to help us out, we're using a kit from the sponsor of this video, Mel Science. They provide everything we need to do this safely and precisely. From a vial of 99.9% .9 pure sulfur powder to all the specialized gear. Their kits are designed to pull back the curtain on complex chemistry that shapes our world and makes it accessible for everyone. We've dropped a link in the description if you want to check them out. There's also a special promotion which we will be talking about at the end of the video. Today we're not just following the instructions, we're exploring the mystery inside this box. Now, before we light the flame, let's properly introduce our main character, Sulfur. Now, for the ones that didn't watch the early video about Sulfur, you probably know its reputation. If you've been near a hot spring or lit a match, you know that distinctive pungent smell. Here's a fun fact, pure solid Sulfur is actually odorless. That classic brimstone smell from ancient texts only happened when sulfur compounds like hydrogen sulfide or sulfur dioxide are formed. For thousands of years, alchemists were obsessed with it, thinking that it held the key to transforming other metals. They were wrong about turning lead into gold, but they were right that sulfur is a master in transformation. Now, on the periodic table, sulfur sits below oxygen and just like its neighbor, it loves to form bonds. But its real secret superpower is something called allotropy. Think of it like this. You have a box, identical Lego bricks. You can use those bricks to build a small, compact car. Or you can use them to build a long, sprawling bridge. Same pieces, but different structures with totally different properties. Sulfur is the king of this. At room temperature, sulfur atoms link into beautiful crown-shaped rings made of eight atoms each. These S8 rings are the basic building blocks. They stack together perfectly to form a solid crystalline structure, which is the brittle yellow powder in our vial. This is sulfur in its most stable form. It's predictable, it's orderly, but as we're about to see, all it takes is a little bit of heat to throw that order into beautiful, magnificent chaos. Now, if you want to know more about sulfur, watch this video we created a few weeks ago about sulfur next. All right, let's get to it. And first things first, safety. We're dealing with high temperatures and chemical fumes here, so we have to wear our glasses and gloves. Also, do this in a well-ventilated area. Safety here is absolutely key. Now, inside the Mel Science Kit, we have our vial of bright yellow sulfur powder. It looks totally inert, almost like a spice. And we're carefully adding this to a heat-resistant tea light holder from the kit. The goal now is to gently heat it over this burner. No, not to set it on fire, just to raise its temperature nicely and steady. If you get the Mel Science subscription, you will also get a starter kit, which also contains this burner. As we bring it to the flame, the first change happens pretty fast. Watch the bottom of the tea light holder and the powder is disappearing, being replaced by a liquid. We're hitting sulfur's melting point right around 115.2 degrees Celsius. And there it goes. The solid is now a stunning, clear, amber-colored liquid. It's thin, it flows easy, it slushes around in the holder just like water. 
So what we're seeing right now is actually just a simple phase change, like ice cube melting. Those crown-shaped S-rings are still intact, but the heat has given them enough energy to break out of their rigid crystal structure and start tumbling over one another, like a jar full of microscopic marbles. Now, if we stopped here and let the liquid cool down really slow, something cool would happen. Those S-rings would stack up again, but in a new pattern, forming long needle-like crystals of a different allotrope called monoclinic sulfur. Same rings, different arrangements, but we're not stopping here. We're going to keep pushing because the real show is about to start. So we're still heating the liquid sulfur, pushing the temperature way past its melting point. And this is where things get weird. Watch the color. See, the beautiful clear amber is darkening. It's basically now shifting to a deep orange and now a blood almost red. It's getting darker and more ominous by the second, but the color is only half of the story. Look at how it moves. Now, when it first melted, the liquid was thin with a low viscosity. Now, when I tilt the tea light holder, it barely flows. It's becoming thick and syrupy, almost like molasses. Now, if we keep going, it'll get so thick, it won't pour at all. Uh, and this is the exact opposite of what you'd expect. Normally, when you heat a liquid, it gets thinner and thinner. So, what on earth is going on here? Now, this is the secret. The intense heat, now pushing 200 degrees Celsius, isn't just making the molecules jiggle. It's so violent that it's physically breaking those stable 8 atom sulfur rings. They're snapping open into reactive 8 atom chains with sticky ends. These broken chains don't stay lonely for long. Their sticky ends immediately grab onto other broken chains, linking up end to end. They're polymerizing. We're going from tiny individual rings to microscopic Cheerios that slide past each other to massive sprawling molecular chains. Hundreds of thousands of atoms long. Think of it as turning a pot of Cheerios into a pot of incredibly long spaghetti. And just like spaghetti, these massive polymer chains get tangled and knotted on a molecular level. Now that massive entanglement is what makes the viscosity skyrocket. The liquid is basically fighting itself, unable to flow because its molecules are tied in a giant knot. We aren't just melting sulfur anymore, we are forging a new material right here in this tea light holder. We've hit the peak. The sulfur is now a dark reddish brown, almost black gooey mess. A seething liquid polymer. Now for the grand finale, what happens if we freeze this exact moment in time? Now we've got a beaker of cold water ready. We're going to pour this superheated thick sulfur directly into the water. It's a process called quenching, and it will cool the sulfur down almost instantly. Ready? Here we go. Now the second the hot sulfur hits the cool water, it erupts into a hiss of steam. It's a dramatic clash of extremes, but under the water something incredible has happened. Let's see what we made. Reaching into the water, we don't pull out brittle yellow rock. We pull out this, a long, continuous rubbery strand, or at least that's what we hope for. We unfortunately did not heat it enough, and therefore the result is not rubbery when it cooled, but rather a form of plastic. This meant part of it did get polymerized and parts did not. What we did was trap the chaos. By cooling it so fast, we didn't give those long tangled polymer chains the time or energy to break apart and reform into their neat S-ring shapes. We have literally frozen the spaghetti monster. The jumbled disordered state of these polymer chains is what gives plastic sulfur its unique rubbery properties. We captured a fleeting high energy state of matter and made it stable at room temperature. We turned a yellow powder into an elemental plastic. This might seem like a cool chemistry party trick, but what we just did creating long polymer chains and locking them in place is one of the most important chemical processes in the modern world. This experiment is basically a simplified version of vulcanization. Now back in the 1830s, 
inventor named Charles Goodyear was trying to make natural rubber more durable, since it would get sticky when hot and brittle when cold. After years of trying, he accidentally discovered that if you heat rubber with sulfur, the sulfur atoms form chains that act like rungs on a ladder, creating crosslinks between the rubber's own polymer chains. Silver crosslinks hold everything together, making the material strong, durable and elastic. This is what makes a car tire a tire, instead of a sticky mess. The secret we just uncover in our tea light holder is the same secret that our entire transportation infrastructure runs on. Every time you see a car, truck or airplane, you're looking at a direct application of sulfur's unique ability to polymerize. And you know, it doesn't stop there. The vast majority of sulfur production is used to create sulfuric acid, the most widely used industrial chemical in the world, which is essential for making fertilizers that feed billions. Sulfur-based compounds are critical components of life-saving antibiotics known as sulfa drugs. So there you have it. We started with a simple yellow powder, a substance known for all of history. We heated it, watched it transform into a bizarre thick red polymer, and then by freezing it in time, we created this incredible plastic material. We went on a journey that revealed a hidden world of chemistry. One that connects a simple element to the complex technology that define our modern lives. So we'd like to give a big thanks to Mel Science for sponsoring this video. Their chemistry kits are one of the best ways to start learning science in a fun, hands-on and beginner-friendly way. Whether you are just getting started or want to refresh your knowledge, the Mel Science app acts like a personal science tutor, guiding you step-by-step step through each experiment. We highly recommend Mel Science to anyone curious about chemistry, young or old. And as a special offer for our viewers, you can get a 50% off of your first month with the promo code CUBE50. There is also an amazing annual deal where you get 12 months for the price of 8 months. Perfect for anyone ready to dive into science all year long. Now if you think I missed anything, let me know in the comments and if you want to know more about sulfur, make sure to watch this video about sulfur next.